This video is best viewed on a full screen at 1080p quality. Click the gear at the lower right corner of the video window. Next, click the quality option. And finally, select 1080p. Okay guys, before we get started, I just want to do a quick two minute explanation of the method I'm going to use to compare projectors for you. Uh, I do not do what most people do, which is to play a movie clip and record the screen with a video camera. And the reason for this is because video cameras automatically adjust for brightness and other things to present the best image possible. Now, I don't necessarily want to present the best image. What I want to do is present the most accurate image for you. Okay, so here we have some uh, image of some colored smoke. It's being projected from our $100 off-brand budget projector. The image doesn't look too bad, and again, that's because our video camera is automatically making adjustments for brightness and other things. Um, now watch that image on the left as I uncover the brighter name brand projector on the right side. Do you see how the image on the left changes brightness depending on the brightness in the room? And that is the reason that I'm not going to videotape the projected images. Instead, I'm going to take still pictures of the projected images uh, side by side without any automated adjustments. Uh, this will give you a much more accurate representation of each projector I'm reviewing for you. I'm projecting all of the images in a dimly lit room rather than a dark room. For this, I'm using two shaded lamps placed about 12 feet diagonally from the center of the screen, and each lamp has a small 15-watt chandelier bulb in it. The ambient light in the room measures 4 lumen at the center of the screen. So the two most important factors in your home theater are obviously the projector and the screen, and that's why I want to quickly mention the type of screen I'm projecting onto. In this case, it's a spandex projector screen instead of the more typical blackout material. There are several advantages to this type of screen, uh, one of which it can attach to a $30 backdrop stand. Uh, it's easy to do. You just take some five spring clips and you attach the screen to the backdrop stand. And this can be used outdoors in your backyard or take it with you camping or to a party. And the screen I have here is made in the USA by Stretch Screen USA. It's available on Amazon for around $80, which is actually less than the do-it-yourself uh, fixed-frame type screen. Uh, you don't have to buy wood, corner brackets, staples, and actually build the frame as you do with that type of frame. The other advantage uh, is that you don't need a permanent empty wall space. For example, the situation I have here is a little awkward to put up a fixed-frame screen because I have a staircase in the way. But with the spandex projector screen, that's not a problem. It literally only takes 30 seconds to put up this screen. Right here, we're all halfway done already. It just simply attaches to five small hooks that are uh, in the ceiling, and you can barely see them. And the corner brackets, the, their bottom corners, attach with a bungee to something as simple as a water jug or whatever you want to uh, use for that. And there you have it. The screen is completely up. Now just compare that to a pull-down screen, which are big, heavy. You typically need two people to move these things around, and you're not going to throw it in your car and take it somewhere, or even move it from room to room. Uh, with the spandex screen, look at how easy this is to take down. Not a problem. And there you go. If you have five hooks in the other room, Another 30 seconds and you got it up. So here you can see the spandex projector screen produces a really good image, but that's only half the story. Check this out. If we pick up our camera and walk around behind the screen, you can see that the spandex projector screen can also act as a backlight screen. That's like getting two screens in one. No other type of projector screen can do this. Now, one of the biggest advantages of uh, rear projection is that you can walk in front of the screen without blocking the projected image. This really comes in handy if you're doing like an outdoor movie with a bunch of kids because they can run around in front of the screen without ca casting shadows on the screen because the projector is actually behind the screen. Now, buyer beware, you may be tempted to go with a cheaper knockoff version from China, but... 
Go with the one made in the USA. It's Amazon's choice, even at a higher price, and it has 147 reviews so far, where the cheap one only has three reviews, which can easily be faked. So here's the Amazon product page of the spandex projector screen that I have, and they have images along the left. As you can see, the it's a much cleaner design instead of sewn crooked and all that, and the fabric is a much higher quality. It's a tighter weave which will give you better colors and a sharper image. And here is a real world example of that. I have the two screens hung side by side with the Made in the USA one on the left and the Chinese knockoff version on the right. And you can really see the difference in the color quality, the brightness, the saturation. And if you look at this next image here, you can actually see how much detail you lose in the smoke due to the uh, looser weave of the cheaper fabric. And in the final example here, just take a look at the stars in the sky. You can see you are almost non-existent in the cheaper fabric of the Chinese knockoff version. So get the Made in the USA screen. If you spent money on a projector, you're going to want a good screen. Here's the product page one more time, and I put a link in the description to make it easy for you. All right, let's get going. Compare our projectors. Here you can see the size comparison between the AXA P300 Neo projector with a brightness of 420 lumen and a resolution of 1280 by 720 p and the AXA P4X Pico projector with a brightness of 175 lumen and a lower 854 by 480 resolution. Our first example is a simple white image to compare the brightness. The AXA P300 Neo is slightly brighter and has sharper focus near the edges. Let's zoom in on this to compare the pixels. Here we have some basic colored squares. The P4X has a little ghosting around the edges as you can see here. This next image here you may want to pause. This is the actual lumen measurement of each colored square. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room. Let's zoom in on the colors to compare the pixels. Here we have a simple color gradient, and we have a fairly similar color profile between the two projectors. Here we have a more advanced color gradient and fairly similar color profile. Uh, notice the edges on the AXA P4X, there's a little bit of ghosting. Here's some color smoke on a white background. The P300 Neo, the higher resolution, produces better details, and the AXA P4X has some jagged lines. If we zoom in, we can see that, perhaps from over sharpening. Here's the colored smoke on a black background. The P4X has some rough edges. The lower resolution and over sharpening can cause that. Let's zoom in to compare that more closely. Here's a simple highlight shadow gradient, and the P4X is blurry near the edge of the projected image, and the P300 Neo has better shadows. And zooming in, you can see how much sharper the P300 Neo is. Here we'll look at the shadows. The P300 Neo produces a much cleaner image, uh, better shadows, and more detail because of the higher resolution. And zooming in, we can see that here. Next, we'll compare the highlights. And the P4X has more contrast, but the P300 Neo is smoother and more crisp. Here we'll compare the shadows again. Uh, there's actually fairly similar shadow and highlight detail, but the P300 is a higher resolution and has better details. Zooming in, we can see that clearly here. Here we'll compare the shadow and highlight details in a single image. The P4X seems to have a little bit too much sharpening, causing jagged edges, and the P300 Neo has better shadow details and more natural looking highlights. Here we'll test the resolution with some grid patterns. The P300 Neo, the higher resolution, uh, reproduces a more accurate grid pattern. And zooming in, we can see the P4X on the right, some of the lines almost disappear. Here's another grid pattern, and we can see the P4X enlarges and crops the edges of the image, and it also has softer focus as you get closer to the edge of the image. Let's zoom in to compare that. Here's some black grids on a white background, and the P300 Neo on the left reproduces the grid pattern more accurately due to its higher resolution. And zooming in, we can see how much sharper the P300 Neo is. 
Reversing that uh, white grid on a black background, again, the P300neo produces a uh, better grid pattern due to the higher resolution. And zooming in, we can see the P4X on the right is somewhat blurry. Next, we'll compare the text output. The P300neo, the higher resolution and better lens equals a crisper image. Let's zoom in to compare the text here. Here we'll compare some skin tones. The P4X is over sharpened, making the faces look a little bit harsh. Uh, we'll zoom in to compare that and see quite a bit of difference in the skin tone. Here are a few more faces for comparison. The P300neo on the left produces much smoother faces. And we'll zoom in to see the difference here. Here we'll just compare the colors, and the both have bright colors. The 300 Neo uh, has better details, and we'll zoom in and compare the green here, how much more detail there is on the left. Here's a similar image for a color comparison. Uh, bright colors by both projectors. The P300 Neo once again has sharper details due to the higher resolution. Here's some fog in the background. The AXA P4X has more contrast, but it produces a softer image. Here we'll compare the colors of the bird. The AXA P4X has some over-sharpening artifacts, making the edges of the beak look jagged. Here we'll compare the night sky. Uh, the AXA P300neo has much better detail due to its higher resolution and better shadow detail as well. Zooming in, we can compare these. Here's an image with a bright light in the background, and the AXA P4X is over sharpened again, producing some jagged lines. Zooming in, we can see the P300neo is a smoother, more detailed image. Here we'll compare the contrast, and the P300neo has better contrast and smoother edges due to it being just brighter overall. And zooming in, we can see how much sharper the image on the left is. Here's a nice dimly lit scene. The P300neo on the left has uh, sharper edges and better details, and the colors are slightly different. Zooming in, let's compare the pyramid here. Here's a sunset scene for comparison. The P300neo on the left has uh, brighter shadows and crisper details. Uh, bridge at night. The P4X once again has some over sharpening artifacts producing jagged edges and let's zoom in on the bolts of the bridge and we can see the P4X the bolts are barely visible. Here's a nice night shot. Uh, the P300neo is brighter with more fine details and we'll zoom in on this and compare the detail of the fence against the dark background. Here's a green train. The P4X on the right is softer, yet over-sharpened, creating some jagged edges once again. Uh, let's zoom in to compare that. Here's a balloon in a dark sky. The P300neo on the left has less pixelated edges. Here's some fireworks in a dark sky. The P300neo retains much better fine line detail due to its higher resolution. And our final comparison image, some stars in the night sky. The P300neo has better shadow details and better fine details. Uh, zooming in on the stars, we can see the clear advantage. Next, we'll compare the AXA P300neo to a quote-unquote full-size name brand BenQ projector that's rated at 2000 lumen. You'll learn in some of my other reviews that the name brand 2000 lumen projectors are actually many times brighter than the so-called 2000 lumen budget projectors that sell on Amazon for under $150. Here's a quick brightness comparison between the sub $100 DB Power T20 budget projector with a claimed rating of 1800 lumen and the name brand BenQ projector rated at 2000 lumen. From this picture, it's clear that the claims of cheap knockoffs are not always true. I think you'd agree the BenQ projector on the right is much more than 10% brighter than the budget projector on the left. 
The same holds true for the quality of your projector screen. Here's a quick comparison between a cheap $30 spandex projector screen made in China on the right and an $80 spandex projector screen made in the USA on the left. As you can see, it's worth spending a bit more for the higher quality image you'll get. With that being said, you will remember from the beginning of this video I showed you that I was projecting these images onto a white spandex projector screen. However, if you want to use your projector in a room that's not totally dark, or if you want to use it outside like in your backyard for an outdoor movie or take a camping or to a party or something, there are two things you may want to consider, a brighter projector and the darker silver spandex projector screen. Even though the silver screen looks quite a bit darker than the white screen, it'll actually give you a nice bright image with more contrast, which is especially useful when you can't get an environment that's completely dark, such as being outside with a full moon or if there's streetlights nearby. Now the other benefit of the darker silver spandex screen is that you won't have to wash it as often if you accidentally drop it on the ground because you won't notice dirt as much on the darker fabric. But keep in mind, if the spandex screen does get dirty, you can just throw it in the washer using cool water and then dry it for 10 to 15 minutes in the dryer and it's good as new. That's not as easy with some other types of projector screens. And finally, you'll remember when I showed you the rear projection ability of the white spandex projector screen, well, the silver screen has that same ability. Okay, let's continue with our BenQ comparison. Here you can see the size comparison between the AXA P300 Neo projector with a rating of 420 lumen and a 1280 by 720 resolution next to the full-size name brand BenQ W1070 projector rated at 2000 lumen and a higher 1920 by 1080 resolution. Our first comparison is a simple white image to compare the brightness of the two projectors. As you can see, the 2000 lumen BenQ projector is noticeably brighter than the 420 lumen AXA P300 Neo. Here we compare the basic colors. And this slide you may want to pause on once again. This is the actual lumen measurement of each color. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room. And let's zoom in to compare the color pixels. Here's a basic color gradient comparison. Here's a more advanced color gradient, fairly similar results, the BenQ brighter. Uh, better details from the BenQ due to the higher resolution. Here we're zooming in, we can see that clearly. Here is the colored smoke on the black background. Zooming in, we can see the difference in detail quality. This shows the BenQ has better shadow details. Zooming in. And here's an example of the much better shadow detail from the BenQ. Here we'll test highlights and BenQ is much brighter. Much better shadow detail again from the BenQ. Zooming in we can see that clearly. Good detail. Nice highlights from both projectors, better shadows from the BenQ. Here both projectors produce a nice even grid pattern. And here's a similar grid. And we'll zoom in on this one to compare the lines. Here's a black grid on a white background, and zooming in, nice patterns from both projectors, and the opposite white on a black background, and we'll zoom in on that one, and the BenQ is better due to the higher resolution. Here the text looks decent from both projectors, but when we zoom in we can see it's a little bit better from the higher resolution BenQ. Good skin tones from both projectors, with the BenQ being brighter. Zooming in, we can see the clear difference here. And a few more faces for skin tone comparison. Zooming in. Here we have a basic color comparison. The BenQ has brighter colors. And a similar color comparison with similar results. Nice image from both projectors, the BenQ being brighter. And brighter background on the BenQ. And better sky detail uh, from the BenQ. And zooming in, we can see it's a crisper image from the higher resolution BenQ. Again, a nice image from both projectors. The BenQ obviously brighter with a bit more detail because of the higher resolution. Here are the better contrast from the BenQ, which is brighter overall, and zooming in we can see it's a bit crisper. 
Here's a good low light image with the BenQ producing better shadow details and let's zoom in on the pyramid to compare the resolution. Here's a good sunset scene, BenQ overall brighter, nice colors from both projectors. Good looking results from both projectors and zooming in we can see both produce uh, good details as well. Here's a nice nighttime scene, you can see the BenQ is much brighter. Zooming in, uh, both have good details. Here we get a similar green color from both projectors with better shadow details from the brighter BenQ and zooming in we can compare the fine details. Again, good results from both projectors with the AXA being darker. For the fireworks, the brighter and higher resolution BenQ produces uh, better fine line details. And our final comparison, the BenQ is brighter and sharper. So you can probably understand why the AXA P300neo is one of my favorite overall projectors when it comes to image quality. Considering its small size and decent price, its image quality actually holds up pretty well even when compared to a full-size 2000 lumen name brand BenQ projector. So my final advice is as follows. If you're always going to be using your projector in a totally dark room, then the brightness isn't as important as the resolution. It'd be better to get a dimmer projector with a higher resolution. So if your viewing environment isn't totally dark, such as a room with windows and you don't have blackout curtains during the day, or you're outside where there may be street lights or a glowing moon, then you'll want to go with a brighter projector. But remember that cheap projectors are almost never as bright as they claim to be. And as far as resolution goes, I would typically pick a less bright projector with a higher resolution over a brighter projector with a lower resolution. You can always try to make your room darker, but you'll never be able to increase the resolution of your projector. I personally would never get a projector with a resolution below 720p, which is a resolution of 1280 pixels across by 720 pixels high. The reason for this is that you'll most likely be enlarging the video to about 9 feet across, and at that size you can actually see the individual pixels on lower resolution projectors. I think a 1080p projector is about the highest resolution you'd need, as a 4K projector doesn't really add all that much to the picture quality for the much higher price you'd be paying. Here's a screenshot from a YouTube video that compares a 4K projector versus a 180p projector. It's being projected onto a wall, but even so, there's really not much difference between the quality. As far as sound goes, I would recommend an external speaker of some sort, as most projectors that I've come across under $500 do not have great sound quality. But I will say I was fairly impressed with the sound I got from the soda can sized Nebula capsule. You'll also want to consider if you'd like a portable projector that can run on batteries, as opposed to a projector that has to be plugged into the wall. The portability of the smaller projectors is always nice, but keep in mind that the battery life is almost always under 2 hours, but it is not limited to running on the battery only. You can always plug it in for unlimited run time. As far as portable projectors go, I really like the AXA brand. The P300, P700, and M5 projectors have a fairly high resolution, nice colors, and good brightness. The Nebula capsule also produces a decent image with really good speaker, but it does have a lower resolution than the three AXA projectors. Alright everybody, thanks for your time. I hope you found this video informative, and if you think others would find it helpful, please click the thumbs up button, which makes it easier for them to find it. And also don't forget to click on the links for the Spandex projector screens below in the description, and check back for more projector comparison videos coming up soon. Thanks for watching.